Welcome back in the film room. I'm your host, Eric Turner. Today, we're going to take a quick look at some stats and film from the Chargers game, specifically the Bills run game. Coming out of the bye, they obviously wanted to jumpstart that offense and specifically the run game. And I thought they did a great job of running concepts that fit the offensive line, but also tied in really well with the passing game and the play action game that they wanted to use in that in the game against the Chargers. They ran play action almost 52% of the time. So the run concepts had to blend well and look very similar to the play action concepts that they wanted to run. And they did a good job of tying those together to have a decent amount of balance in the run and pass game. So let's take a look at some of the stats specifically uh, for the run game and how they attacked the Chargers defense. One of the worst run defenses, uh, if we're talking about run defense efficiency, they were ranked 32nd in run defense DVOA going into the game. So let's look at the rushing direction on the right hand side of the screen here. Look at the attempts. The attempts were seven left end, five left guard, four left tackle. So very left-handed dominant by the Bills. It's something that they've done all year. They've actually averaged really well yards per carry wise when, when running to the left side of the, of the uh, offense. So this was no different, but those seven attempts out wide is different. It's something that I talked about a few weeks ago is the Bills are not getting those explosive plays outside on the perimeter. They're not getting the chunk yardage that they were getting last year from those pin and pull runs, some of those tosses on the perimeter. They did last uh, game uh, against the Chargers. They had, let's see, four, six, six first downs off the left side of the offensive line. And you can see as far as runs 10 yards or more, they had five of them from the left side of the offensive line. So getting Mitch Morris back, kicking Feliciano over to left guard and having Dawkins out there, along with what they did with the tight ends of sitting Tyler Croft, bringing Dawson Knox back in the fold, and specifically Lee Smith. He was a help in the run game, and we're going to take a look at some of those plays here in a few minutes. So good game by the running backs. Uh, Devin Singletary finished with 11 carries for 82 yards, seven and a half yards per attempt. Uh, obviously broke a few 10-yard runs here. You can see there's three of them um, that he broke off and, again, off the left-hand side. Moss also pitched in. He had the longest run of the day with a 31-yarder towards the end of the game in the fourth quarter. Uh, more of a guy that runs up inside, but you saw him on a duo concept that we're going to take a look at, run upside and, and spin out and go out the back door for a large gain. So uh, another good game uh, by him. He's starting to stack some good runs and good games together. So... It's nice to have the Bills um, one-two punch starting to get in the fold. And I think, again, coming out of the bye, uh, that was obviously a focus of getting the run game going. But tying it in and blending it with the passing game will help the Bills run better uh, going down the stretch and into the playoffs. That's one thing that the Bills, you know, kind of struggled with leading up to the bye week was um, they're a spread offense, you know, and they wanted to run some of those spread run concepts, but they weren't getting the movement up front. Well, this week, they changed some of their scheme to get that movement up front, to get those double teams, to get vertical movement at the line of scrimmage. And that's why the run game had such success against the Chargers. So without further ado, let's jump into the film. All right, let's dive into the film. Second and seventh situation in the first quarter. And the Bills come out in one of their personnel groupings and formations that they wanted to run the ball in. And again, they built... Some of their passing concepts off this as well. So Lee Smith is in the game. He motions and changes the strength of the formation now to the field. And you got to pay attention to how the Chargers defended these formations. So the Bills showed them certain formations that they wanted to run out of. And the defense is obviously going to align in a certain way against those fronts. So two really heavy inside techniques by the defensive tackle. You got two wide on the left side here. And then uh, sort of a, a wider shade off the center here by this defensive tackle. So there's a really nice bubble right out here, right? And that's exactly what the Bills want. Because now that bubble is manned by a linebacker and a linebacker. So the Bills run their outside zone. This is a concept that they ran really well since the Patriots game. Usually Bacher was right here at left guard and again Feliciano at center. But they ran really well off the left side of the offensive line 
probably for the last month or so. And this is their main run concept. They've been running this outside zone really well. You see Feliciano play into this defensive tackle before climbing to the second level. And what he's doing, he's bouncing that defensive tackle over to the center so that Morse can get to the front side shoulder of the defensive tackle. And Singletary does a good job of reading this. Stays front side. There's no way he's going to get out wide on this outside zone run. Is patient. He gets up inside. Unfortunately, he runs up the back of Morse. You'd like to see him hit the crease with a little better timing and cut. But he's still able to get good chunky yardage on this play. So good work by the left side of the offensive line, including Mitch Morse, of occupying the first level. Feliciano bounces that defensive tackle over. Singletary gets up inside the crease, and the Bills are in business after a good run by Singletary. Third and three situation. And again, pay attention to the formations. Two by two set, right? Two receivers to the bottom. Tight end up top in line, and then a receiver to the top of the screen. Two by two set. And Bills are running their RPO concept here. It's a run pass option. On the snap, Josh is taking the ball and executing a mesh with Zach Moss. And this is the conflict defender right here. This is who Josh is trying to read or hold on this run. The receivers to the bottom are just running in-breaking routes. This is the pass portion of the RPO. Up to the top, these guys are just blocking. Knox and Diggs is stealing a route here and then just blocking that corner. And so, depending on what that conflict defender does, it'll determine what Josh does on the play. And he hands it to Moss, and the Bills are able to convert on third and three. So this was just another one of those ways that the Bills use their run game to complement their pass game. You saw the Bills run these RPOs successfully the last month or so. They haven't used it often, but when they did, like you saw in this game, you saw Josh throw it to Beasley over the middle on the slant in the very same pin and pull run concept. And the pin and pull portion of this is my favorite part of the RPO. So at the point of attack, with this you know wide three tech right here, or this four eye, you're getting a down block by Darrell Williams. And that's allowing a short pull by Winters. And then, of course, Mitch Morris doing what he does best is getting on the perimeter here and leading upside and attempting to get the safety there. So good work on third and three. This is keeping options open for your offense. It's a third and three situation. This is a run or a pass. So you're taking the best of both worlds here. And again, Josh is still a threat to run the, run the ball here. But look at what the mesh does. Look at what Josh's eyes do to that conflict defender right here. He doesn't know if, she, if he should be dropping into his zone to defend the slant that's coming across the middle or fill versus the run. You know, whether it's in that gap right there or scraping down a line of scrimmage to make the tackle on Moss. So he is held flat-footed. The Bills get numbers and advantageous leverage on the front side to play into the boundary. And with that, they get a first down. First and 10 situation builds up 17 to 6. They go back to Lee Smith in the outside zone run game. So now on the first play of this breakdown, you saw the Chargers play with two heavy inside techniques. Here's a two eye technique right here, which was on the back side of the strength of the formation. So again, the strength of the formation started on the right side here with Smith, but then the Bills changed the strength. The defensive line doesn't shift. All they do is bump these guys over a little bit, right? So now, instead of having two separate two-eye techniques, you have a two-eye here and then a three-technique here. And the Bills still uh, try to attack this bubble right here. Now, obviously, you see the linebacker stacked over the bubble right there. But guess what? You want to secure the first level first. So you get outside zone look here. Get a nice little combo block on the defensive end between Lee Smith and... And Deion Dawkins, of course, they are working to the linebacker that's flowing over the top. And another nice combination block and work between Feliciano and Morse. You'll see Feliciano bounce that defensive tackle over the Morse. And then when that linebacker threatens the gap, he's going to peel off and pick him up. And Singletary's patience is really what pays off here. So he works out wide. And as this defensive end starts peeking out wide to get into his gap, you're going to see Singletary just get north and south. That's exactly what you want on these outside zone runs. You want your running back to make decisive cuts, decisive reads, 
get north and south, follow those blocks, and get good chunks of yardage. So now the Bills go to 11 personnel. They have Dawson Knox in and Diggs off the left side of the screen. And now they're running duo. And I like duo because it's a power gap type run where you're getting a lot of vertical movement at the line of scrimmage. Generally, you get two combination blocks, sometimes three combination blocks. But because of the alignment of the Chargers with this two-eye technique right here and then another two-eye technique here, you're not getting the two combination blocks at the point of attack or two double teams. So you're getting Singletary downhill and they're attacking that strong side gap. Those that gap between Feliciano and Dawkins and then Knox and Dawkins. They're attacking those gaps. They're getting vertical and look at the block by Dawson Knox. He's taking hands to the face and he does get thrown, but look at the movement that he gets. I mean, the ball spotted right around here. Look at the movement he gets on the Chargers defensive end. And that's the block that Singletary is hugging. You get Diggs climbing to the safety right here. And everyone's blocking down. Again, this is a gap run without a puller. So they're getting the vertical movement. You're getting everyone blocking down here and allowing your running back to cut off of those blocks. Off of that vertical movement. And the Bills get a good chunk of yardage on a run from shotgun. That's something they really haven't done all that often is run that duo out of shotgun. You're going to see them run it out of uh, from under center here in a few moments. So now we're at the top of the fourth quarter. Now you have Lee Smith in the game. And look at the formation. It's another two-by-two two set. And what do you think this defender is pointing out? What are they expecting with Josh Allen under center, with Lee Smith in the game, just shifting over? They're probably expecting what? That outside zone run again, right? And that's what I think... Jenkins is pointing out here. But key in on Gabriel Davis and his alignment now. Why is he in a nasty alignment? Why is he tight to the formation? That's because the Bills are now running duo from this personnel grouping and formation. So you're going to see them all block down again. Here's a, here's a combination block. Here's a down block. Here's Dawkins washing that guy down. Here's Lee Smith coming to the second level, washing that guy down. And the tight alignment by Davis allows him to get a piece of Jenkins right here on a down block. So they're getting downhill with motor. They're running that dual concept, getting that movement, washing all of those players down. Why? So that motor can now bounce it outside off the left-hand side. And duo, generally, when it bounces out wide, is going to put the running back one-on-one -on -one with a corner. And those are the matchups that you want. You want your running back matched up versus a corner. You want to make that corner tackle. He's not able to on this play. Motor breaks that tackle, shows great balance, good decisive read of getting downhill, and then making that defender miss and getting yardage after contact. So first and 10 situation, we're still in the fourth quarter. Now, this is Singletary's fumble. So, again, two-by-two two set, right? Two-by-two two set. Bill's running their RPO, their pin and pull RPO. And Singletary breaks this one off really nicely, but, of course, fumbles it at the end, which really kind of snowballed, you know, some of the turnovers and mistakes in that fourth quarter. But let's take a look at it from the end zone angle. Again, that's at RPO. Got those two in-breaking routes to the bottom of the screen. But let's look at the blocking at the point of attack. This is what the Bill's offense needs to do more and more of. Get those down blocks with those big tackles and Dawkins and Williams at the point of attack. Get those centers and guards pulling and on the perimeter. I mean, look at the movement, the horizontal movement these guys get on the defensive lineman, including Bosa here. I mean, all these guys are slanting inside right here, the, the Chargers defensive lineman. They're slanting inside because they're sending the blitz right here. So those guys are slanting inside. So all these offensive linemen and, and tight ends have to do is just wash them down. Just wash them down and let those centers and guards get on the perimeter. So now you have Feliciano pulling, kicking out a safety. That's a matchup you want. You have Morse getting and kicking out Vigil right here. And look at the alley. Look at this alley right here. And that alley is that way because the backside linebacker is being held by Josh Allen's eyes. Watch the mesh here. Watch Josh Allen's eyes. He's just holding him. 
This guy doesn't know if he should be filling or dropping to his zone. This is what the look of an RPO, whether Josh is really reading this defender, this conflict defender or not, or if this is a, a called handoff, it doesn't matter. It serves the same purpose. Those eyes on that linebacker, that conflict defender, hold him and make him late to the ball here. Now, he does get a good lick on Singletary, but it's vigil from the backside that really punches the ball out. You got to have better ball security by motor on this play. But those are the type of plays you want from the Bills offense going forward. You want them to, to tie in, blend in their run concepts, run formation, run alignments with their passing game. And these RPO looks, these pinnacle RPO looks are what the Bills need to add more into their arsenal. So second and eight situation, just under eight minutes. Look at the formation. Two by two set. Tight to the line of scrimmage here by the wide receiver. Another nasty alignment. Dawson Knox in line right there. What do you think they're running? We just pretty much just saw it. But we saw it from under center, right? We're running duo. So you get the down blocks. You get the read by Moss. And he gets north and south. He breaks that arm tackle by Joey Bosa. Gets north and south and gains eight yards. And that's several yards after contact. So again... On the snap, you're getting the down blocks at the point of attack. You want these guys all blocking down here. And this is where Moss needs to be hitting it right here. Now, Knox gets beat a little bit by Bosa as expected. But again, he does enough to force Bosa to try to make the tackle with one arm. That's not going to bring a guy down like Moss, especially one a running back that Plays so well with his offhand. Watch this offhand rip up right there. Breaks that arm tackle. Gets north and south. So they got the movement at the point of attack right here. Between Williams and Brian Winters. And that's why Moss is able to get to the second level. Break some tackles and really punish the Chargers. And really hurt their morale. First and 10 situation. Now we have Josh Allen under center. You see him pull. Digs tight of the formation. Now why are they doing that? Well, they're running duo again, and they see that Jenkins is up on the line of scrimmage. So, again, duo is getting downhill, reading this linebacker, and if he commits inside, generally that, run, that running back is going to cut it outside, bounce it out wide. So, if Jenkins is sitting there at the end of the line of scrimmage, there is no bounce here. So, they pull Diggs into the line of scrimmage there, into the formation, and they run duo. So... Again, everyone's blocking down, right? Everyone's blocking down, but what happens is as Vigil comes downhill, Moss really has nowhere to go. He wants to bounce it out wide, but the force used by Jenkins and this defensive end right here, you see them playing on the Bills line of scrimmage right there. They're playing on the Bills side. They get penetration. They cut off really where Moss wants to bounce it. He wants to bounce it out wide. Here comes the corner. Crack replacing. So Moss has nowhere to go. So what does he do? He spins, hits the backside gap, and scampers for 31 yards. Now, how is he able to hit that backside gap? Well, that's because everyone, again, everyone's blocking down. Look at the movement that Morse and Feliciano get on that defensive tackle. Look at that combination block. Look at them get that vertical movement, push that guy right into the lap of the linebacker, and cover those two guys up. So now those two are covered. The defensive end now, Tillery right here versus Dawkins, he disengages. And as Moss spins and and, and hits that uh, daylight, the defensive end is crashing hard inside, and Moss reads it. As soon as he finishes that spin move, he's able to bounce outside there with a nice cut. Shows great vision, hitting the backside gap on a dual run. It doesn't happen often. He finds it, but as soon as he's done making Tillery miss, he sees that Chris Harris is trying to contain the play out wide here. So he cuts back up inside that, breaks another tackle, and again gets a really nice explosive run. So this is this is Moss playing above the scheme. This is what you want from your running backs. You want them to be able to work within the system, within the structure, but when there isn't anything there, you want them to be creative. And that's what Moss does here. He spins out and he's able to get an explosive play for the Bills offense. 
late in the game when they really need to, to run the clock out. So 5-0-2 left in the game, fourth quarter, 24-17. Bills, again, trying to run that clock out. It's first and 10 situation. Two by two set. What do you think's coming? That's right. That RPO, that pin and pull RPO. And this is the run that really kind of broke the morale of the Chargers and really sealed the game for the Bills. So let's take a look at it from the end zone angle. So now they have a really big bubble right here because Joey Bosa is playing extremely wide in a two-point stance. So there's a big bubble. They're almost inviting the run here. Bills run their pin and pull RPO. Josh is putting the ball in the belly of the running back, holding this defender right here. They're getting down blocks at the point of attack by Dawkins. Lee Smith climbing the second level, sealing him off. And now you have Morse and Feliciano pulling. Morse is kicking out Joey Bosa. You see Bosa try to tighten and close down that gap right there that they're trying to open up. He squeezes down the line of scrimmage a couple yards. Feliciano gets his hands on him, gets hand leverage, and gets some help from Morse. Morse helps widen that hole and then climbs to Jenkins, gets a helmet on a helmet, and that is able to spring motor into the secondary. So this is good work at the point of attack by the Bills offensive line and tight end. Lee Smith here, good job of sealing the alleyway for Motor on this play. And Motor, you see him slice and dice there. This is him setting up his blocks. And again, that backside defender, number 56, he's just, there's no way he's going to be able to be in a position to tackle Singletary or square him up. Singletary is able to get leverage on that defender. So getting power at the point of attack with your big tackle and Deion Dawkins, and he is aggressive on that down block. Watch him play with active hands. That guy's trying to disengage and beat the hands of Dawkins here. Dawkins just pretty much swallows him up, seals that alley, and the Bills get a hat on a hat, and Motor is into the secondary for a big run. So this is what the Bills need to continue to build on going forward. Using the plays that have worked in the first you know, three quarters of the season using those outside zone run concepts. Keep running those. You know, keep pounding that the rock in that manner with those concepts. Then adding more RPOs because these pin and pull RPOs, they're maximizing your offensive line in several ways. They're putting the defense in a bind, but they're also getting, you know, powerful down blocks at the point of attack and getting guys that excel at getting on the perimeter like Feliciano and Mitch Morse on the perimeter to widen the holes and get those explosive plays outside of the box. That's something the Bills have missed this year is getting those explosive chunk plays on the perimeter of the defense. And they're not they're not getting it on these plays as often as they did last year. The jet sweep hasn't been as effective as it's been in prior years, but these are the type of the run concepts that the Bills need to build on going forward. So thanks for joining me in the film room again. This is a quick run concept breakdown from the Chargers game. Uh, if you guys are interested in these type of breakdowns, make sure you get to CoverOne.net and the CoverOne YouTube page and take a look at some of the video breakdowns that I've done recently. Uh, the most recent one was done yesterday on AJ Klein. That was a fun one. It was a live breakdown film room session with a bunch of the CoverOne subscribers uh, talking about AJ Klein's you know, rise over the last few games and how they've tweaked the defense to fit his skill set. That was a fun breakdown. It's a long form breakdown. So get to the YouTube channel of Cover One to take a look at that. And if you guys appreciate these breakdowns, make sure to like and comment on those videos on YouTube and all of our content at CoverOne.net.